you know, uh, on that note of that previous video, I'm going to link you guys to a good book that can... It, it doesn't fully describe how I feel, but it is a, it's a nice start. It's called uh, Nihilist, Nihilist Communism, and it is basically the perception of a communist political goal uh, using nihilism as the philosophical means. And I, I think it does a good job in expressing how just because uh, you know that the world is subjective and full of materialistic, greedy, sadistic assholes that don't believe in anything, it doesn't mean you don't have to. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the misconception about nihilists, that they're just all moral relativists and don't believe in anything. You, you see that all around you anyway. So does that mean everyone's a nihilist? No. Nietzsche said that uh, most people are the everyman. What is the everyman? The everyman is someone that just gives up and just believes that he can go through life being everyman. Just, you know, working his job and not having anything to live for. Just being a mindless drone and... Uh, then Nietzsche said there is a transitional period from being the everyman to um, the ubermensch. And I believe the middle ground, I don't remember what he called it, but I just call it the why man. Because he asks why. He asks that about everything. Why do people act the way they do? Why do we have to follow the rules we have to follow? Why is life the way it is? Why must we struggle? Why must we die? Why must we feel negative things? Why must we feel positive things just because something happens a certain way? Uh, the why man always asks and demands answers. And I don't know if the Ubermensch is even possible. The Ubermensch is a metaphysical concept that borders on religion, which is ironic because Nietzsche was a very militant atheist. But the Ubermensch would take more than just a state of mind, because it's useless unless you can physically make it happen. So the Ubermensch requires you to believe on some level that you can affect reality through psychic means, I suppose. Uh, you need to be able to bend reality to your will. And that borders on witchcraft and sorcery and, you know, most people aren't going to fall for that shit. It, it, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I'm just saying it's not practical. It, you know, if it was, we'd all be doing it. I'm sure the elite are doing it, but we're not doing it. So, just, uh, you know, just settle for being the Y man at this point. Uh, another, a good movie for nihilism thought is Watchmen. You know, a lot of people think the comedian was a nihilist. He wasn't. He was the everyman. He was the guy that went through life doing what he was told to do, and he figured he made a good income, and he didn't, he didn't mind breaking people's legs and just, you know, shooting at protesters and shit. He figured he's got a good thing going here. And he didn't mind the corruption and the filth. He knew it was there, but he didn't do anything about it. Rorschach was the Y man. Rorschach was the true nihilist. He saw that the world was empty and just full of depression and bloody violence and coercion and thuggery and criminals. And he did something about it and he bothered to ask why. Uh, Owl, Night Owl, I would say, was he was almost a Y man. He was transitioning into it, but he was still an everyman. He was using his gadgets and his, you know, Batman copy crap to basically ascribe to the morality that was set before him. Uh, he did not bother to ask why. He simply did it. He may have acted outside the law to some extent, but ultimately he was still an everyman. He was just nice he was nicer than the comedian and you know he more so looked up to Rorschach but he was still an everyman and and that's why he was ultimately useless the only one that could really constitute as an ubermensch in the mortal sense was Ozymandanus uh and even Ozymandanus uh had his problems he still was ascribing to those basic morals set before us by other people world peace world you know where everyone is poor and we need to help them and he was missing the point of being an ubermensch so you know I, I honestly think it was a good movie and I don't know if Alan Moore intended it to be that way because to my knowledge Alan Moore is very uh, much into the occult and you know he, he, he's full of himself he's a pseudo-intellectual but that was a good fiction
It was probably the only time I really liked what he wrote, because I didn't like Swamp Thing or V for Vendetta or any of that shit. Um, so I guess that's that should be what you you know aspire to be like, like a communist Rorschach. So uh, just check out the book if you want to, or don't. I don't really give a shit. And you can delve into what is going on in the mind of Jim Prophet. And uh, you can realize that just because I know physically that none of it matters, it doesn't matter what you believe, it doesn't matter how you feel, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, it doesn't mean I don't care. It just, it, I mean, I don't care, but in a way I do. It's, it, I wish I could describe this better, it's hard. But essentially, you have to hope for something better in life. You have to hope for something better metaphysically, and you have to strive for it. You have to create principles. You have to create religious doctrine. And you have to push forward. That's the, that's the gist of nihilism. And uh, this idea that you're just going to go through life not doing anything is completely contradictory to what nihilism was about. Uh, in fact, before the communist revolution, there was the nihilist revolution in Russia. It didn't work out, but at least they tried. That's what nihilism comes down to. It's not about winning or losing. It's about trying to enforce a principle. I guess that's it.